Right. Outside peg. Feet back. Welcome back everyone to the winter edition how to series to show you how to survive the wet weather wherever you are in the world. Now I have chosen to do this on a normal dirt bike but just know that these base skills apply to any motorcycle whether it's a motocross bike, an enduro bike, a rally bike or an adventure bike. These skills apply across the board. I'll start basic, they'll get more advanced and uh, in particular I've chosen the Husky 300 I had one of these in 2017 and I just for this, these exercises I just wanted a lightweight sharp steering accurate dirt knife that you know doesn't have too much engine braking and it'll allow me to really go into detail of the techniques a bit better than the bigger bikes and in saying that all you adventure bike riders, if you have the opportunity, really refine your skills on the little dirt bike. You can cartwheel these things all day. They're a lot cheaper to replace parts. Um, they don't get as damaged when you crash. And you can feel out the extremities of the technique a lot quicker, a lot easier on little dirt bike. Anyway, let's get into it. The secret to riding off-road in the wet is knowing when to do absolutely nothing. And by doing nothing, I mean no throttle, no brakes, and the skill comes down to picking these moments and floating on the bike and letting it roll. At best, if you're on a big four stroke, a little bit of trailing throttle to get rid of any engine braking, I wanna teach you guys how to survive those super, super slick moments that are happening here, there, and everywhere when you ride off-road in the winter. Let's get into it. Okay guys, to kick this off, I wanna show you the most basic element to this is to roll. No throttle, don't do anything, just roll around a corner. Okay, I'm gonna show you this both ways. Gather some speed and roll. Don't do anything, just roll around the turn. You'll be amazed at how much traction a rolling wheel has as opposed to an accelerating wheel or a braking wheel. Rolling the turn can give you outstanding traction in the slipperier surface. I'm closing the throttle in the gear that I've entered the corner in, coasting, rolling the turn, and then getting back on the gas. And roll, power. Get off the throttle smoothly, coast smoothly. Get on the gas smoothly. Now did you see the back end step out there along this greasy part? Between letting everything off, dropping the power, don't touch the brakes, get the chassis rolling. The last element I'm gonna do is exaggerate that by weighting the outside peg and tipping the chassis between my legs, okay? I'm gonna do everything I can to help this bike around this turn. Wow. <laughs> what a dirt knife. This next section is going to combine a bit of both. It's about searching for those points of traction, gassing it only when there's traction. It all comes down to reading the surface. Never will you find a more hardcore situation to implement the coasting, do nothing, roll and let the chassis do everything method than a high speed, greasy step down into a rough downhill into a corner. Let's go. So I know the drop off's coming. I want to square up real early, straight line off it. Find the traction, square it off. Attack where there's traction. Coast. Attack where there's traction and whoa. 
Whoa! Sorry, couldn't talk you through that last bit. I was too busy doing as little as possible, just staying in the center of the bike, no throttle, no brake, just letting the chassis carry me through those bumps and then waiting the outside peg, tipping the inside bar, relaxing the chassis into the corner. Um, yeah, I think you get the picture there. Coasting, rolling, you saw the outcome. Just bolt upright, enduro style, safe. Cleared the gap in the greasiest conditions, no problem. It works. Knowing when to do nothing works. Okay, this next section guys is when you have to make the traction count, the drive count. The secret comes back to the rolling entry of the corners. The higher gear, rolling back on. Once you've got that rear wheel lit and driving, feed your weight, weight the pegs. It's all about being smooth. Here we go, roll the corner, get traction early. Okay guys, perfect opportunity here to show you how the rolling coasting doing nothing technique and weighting the outside peg into the sloppiest of turns can keep you upright. If you just charged in here and expected to rail into this corner, you're going to go down. Okay, coast do nothing. Back on the gas. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but the front wheel just goes. All right. Coast. Right, let's see if I can go three for three. Whoa. 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 Bit excited there, nearly tucked the front. This is an important one. And it all comes down to not being deterred by water. A lot of people freak out. Everything goes to shit because they see a bit of water. It all comes back to coasting, staying upright, getting through the turn, feeding on the power. All right, I'm powering, available traction, off the gas, coast. All right, guys, the last and most advanced part of this method in finding traction in such greasy and somewhat rough conditions is short shifting, shifting your weight over the back of the bike and creeping your boots back to the balls of your foot on impact, whether it's ruts, whether it's up ramps, you want that extra bit of ankle suspension, which ultimately is gonna help the back end work better and it's gonna help it maintain traction, especially off the up ramps. You know, what you wanna avoid here is the big sideways kicker and then landing all crossed up. Um, but the goal here is to coast through the corner, Ease into the power, short shifting. Once you've got the traction, you're maintaining it and feeding it the berries, like everything it's got. Right, short shift, ease the traction, creep back, balls of your feet. That was so much fun, I'm going again. I can't believe how well this thing hooks up though, in such greasy terrain. I'm sure the CR would be all over the joint. Right. Outside peg. Feedback. Wow. It's just not putting a foot wrong, this thing. That's the secret of how to ride in the wet. Knowing when to do absolutely nothing. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of our How to Ride series, Winter Edition. And next week, keep an eye out for a video about here somewhere. I'm going to show you guys how to lose all fear of climbing hills and get it done. In the rain, in the winter, whatever. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks again.